Welcome back to the Horse Racing Show. Glad you're with us. Delighted to have this man with us. We were talking earlier, pound for pound, you won't find a better athlete in any sport than a jockey. And here's one of the best around. The Hall of Famer, John Velasquez, joins us. John, thanks for being on. Uh, thank you for having me. So I, I want to ask you, I mentioned this a minute ago, and then we will not discuss this anymore because I know you've talked it out about the, <laughs> about the Preakness. But what I pointed out, thank God you're good. Uh, thank God Bodie Express is good. Having said all that, I think it just shows how tough you guys are and how dangerous your sport can be uh, because I've had so many people say, my goodness, he looked like he was eight feet in the air when he came down. Yeah, it was. I mean, well, one of those things, you know, they were so, so, so high up, you know, uh, from the gate, you know, and uh, I'm glad that, I, you know, nothing seriously happened to both of us. I mean, he obviously uh, felt the, the uh the other horses went around and he was and he was cut after he won around a couple of times. I um, mean, I was fine. You know, I, I actually kind of rolled around and sat sat up and rode away, and I know I was fine. More people have said to me, you know, the interview we did on NBC not moments after that, when you're walking back to the jockey's room, they were amazed at how calm and cool you were, and the fact that you were okay. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, thank God, you know, nothing bad happened. I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't. You know, be mad at what happened. You know, it's an it's an accident, and you know, uh, we gotta move on. I mean, I was glad that I was, I was okay. I was just, I mean, I was waiting out there in the in the ambulance, and I was just worried about the horse. That, you know that he, you know, that he would come back okay. So uh, once I knew the horse was good, and the ambulance came out and uh, drove me back to where you guys were, and then I was fine. Also, and I see that the horse was fine. Uh, actually, I was going to go and take my saddle off the horse and my brother was there. So then I got it, got it. So, and that was fine. You know, just go back to the normal routine, I guess. <laughs> and that, and that's a normal life for a jockey. You know, I, I guess you guys can never allow yourself to think, you know, that there's some danger out there. Do, do you ever even think about that? Well, the danger is always there, you know, even, uh, right before you get into the horse, though, you know, even when you touch the horse for the first time, the horse can do something, you get kicked or whatever, you know, I, I actually, I got kicked to, uh, Early in my career, I just tr tried trying to get on the horse right on the paddock, and I broke my hip. So it's always something there. So, but you can't think about it. You, uh, you got a job to do. Uh, concentrate on the things you have to do, and uh, and that's it. You know. So it's just you have to you have to be watch out for you know things. The horses, uh, any surprises. Let's put it that way. Uh, hopefully, you don't get surprised. And like uh, like I said earlier, that you know I got my I got kicked in and broke my my hip. Uh, early in my career but you know you learn for those mistakes and uh you move on I, I think with you could probably put jockeys football players and maybe some hockey players together and everybody could compare broken bones absolutely i mean i guarantee you we will be talking a lot about bro broken bones and self tissue injuries and everything else that goes through it you know so um you know this is a uh, in football and, and hockey is a very uh uh, tough sport. There's a lot of contact on it, and basically we lose them then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask you now about coming up in the. Uh, if for those listening on Wednesday, June the fifth, if you're in the neighborhood of Long Island, New York, if you're in the city, come on out to Long Island at the Cherry Valley Country Club in Garden City. We're having a fundraiser that's going to benefit the permanently disabled Jockeys Fund and also the Belmont Ch uh, Child Care uh, Unit, and that is for the kids of the backstretch workers and john velasquez has been a big part of that randy moss donna brothers from nbc will join me and mike watchmaker from uh, da daily racing form and we'll have some fun try to handicap a little bit interview some trainers interview john and i know you've been very uh, much involved with the jockeys guild and with this permanently disabled jockeys fund john and uh, what does it mean to have a fundraising event uh, like this in, in terms of the the money that's brought in and needed well, it's very needed, obviously, and then we're constantly uh, trying to raise some funds for for the guys and girls who get hurt in the racetrack and cannot help, you know, their families on their self. Um, and let me just start with: is no guarantee funding for uh, these uh, guys get hurt uh, on the racetrack. So this is how we raise money. You know, this is how we we try to help the families and and whatever they need uh, these guys and girls have. Um, so. It's very important for us to continue the awareness, continue the raising funds, and these events. This is how we, uh, you know, get the fans involved and get the jockeys and trainers and everybody uh, get together and have a little bit of fun. But also important to raise some funds as well.
You know, you hit on the point right there. We've talked about many times on this show, uh, unlike other professional athletes, if you don't, if you're not writing anymore the rest of this month, John Velasquez isn't making a dime. That's it. That's it. You don't, you don't, I don't make a dime again. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's something to think about, isn't it? You know, with, you guys have yeah. to always be on weight. You have to always be prepared. And I guess that just goes in with the lifestyle, doesn't it? You know, you got to eat you, right. You got to train, right. You got to be ready every time out. You have to be ready for everything. That's for sure. You know, uh, um, that's that's our lifestyle, and that, that that's not what we do. Uh, but yeah, we still uh, and to this day we still have no guarantee funding for uh, those guys and girls who get hurt in the on the racetrack. Though, do, do you think there'll be a day when when somehow, some way, I don't know, tracks could get involved with the jockeys guild, with a uh, corporation or something to have some kind of fund set up for? Because not every jockey is a John Velasquez or, or you know, or Javier Castellano or the Ortiz brothers or any of the stars out there today. A lot of these men and women are, are almost kind of like week to week. You know, they're, they're yeah, not the so, stars. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, we, we keep pushing for it. You know, we keep uh, working with the industry and, and hopefully all the stakeholders one day, uh, uh, you know, we'll come up with something that, that we're guaranteed funding for, for a fund like that. Though, you know, I mean, every year we, we try to do something different and, and, to keep the awareness and try to come with better ideas to so at least we we get them direct funding for uh disabled riders and little by little we do have but it's not enough to uh cover the expenses for every month and every uh disabled rider so um i hope that you know in the near near future uh we can get some guarantee funding that that they will cover most of the cost uh then, then we help those guys and girls out and, and by the way they only get a thousand dollars a month which is uh, it's nothing this is 2019 um but you know they're very grateful for everything that we do every every dime that we can give them and uh, uh whether it's medications or or fixing the cars uh ramps on the houses and whatever it is that they, they need you know so they're, they're, they're very grateful though you know but like i said you know it's, it's important to us it's important to keep that awareness and it's important to keep out there that uh, yes, there's no guarantee funding for these guys, and this is important venues that we, we will put together to raise funds for them. Well, that, that's wonderful you do. I, I mean, you know, I don't even have a – I'm so minuscule in my part. I just sit up there and let Randy and Donna and Watchmaker talk and interview you guys, and I'm always just fascinated at how involved you are. And uh, I compliment you on that, John. You, you really are oh, one, of the, one of the great guys out there. Now, I want to ask you, because you know a little bit about this Belmont Stakes, and you know a lot about this Belmont racetrack. And I notice you're going to be riding Intrepid Heart for Todd Pletcher this Saturday. Yes. <laughs> was, was there a choice between, you know, because he's got two in there, was it, was it a choice between Spinoff and Intrepid Heart for you? Yeah, I did. I did. And, and, and I chose to stay with him. Though. You know, I, I think he's, he's definitely right to go the distance you know and and i think they're pretty close match i mean they're they're very talented uh horses um um i just think that you know i've been riding interpret hard the whole time and i and i think he has very very talented and i think that the distance will help him better you know obviously they the both work really really well uh last week um so just hope that they're ready for the race though you know and hopefully that they, they can handle the distance I think my uh, interpret heart should handle this since the, uh, according to his breathing anyway. Um, have to, till they have to show up in the day of the race. And uh, you have a great relationship with Todd Pletcher. What what is this professional and personal relationship been like with Pletcher? Because it's almost automatically, especially you go to Saratoga for so many meets, it was Pletcher Velasquez, Pletcher Velasquez. You could just bet on you guys all day and do pretty well. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's, it's been a... Uh, a great team effort and a great partnership i have to say you know for this many years um and i mean like i said so grateful and 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 uh very uh blessed that i have the opportunities to to work with todd and uh it's, it's a great partnership you know it's a trust uh and and the one other we can communicate very well on things that happens in the races he's very good watching the races and Things that happen on the races that they can read. I, even before I come back and try to say something, he he's watched the race, but he understands what happens in the races. And, uh, it's important for for having that trust and that communication more and over. And if we have to change something for the following race, whether we win or not, you know, it's always the input back and forth to what can do, what can we do better, you know. And uh, it's always been there, so that's what helps and makes my job a lot easier. 
I would guess when you're staying with a with a, a trainer like you have with Pletcher for so many years, and especially when you're staying on the same horse, sometimes that information in a losing race afterwards might be just as important as anything he's going to say in the paddock before the next race with you and that horse. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. So, I mean, I, I, like I said before, we, we communicate really well, and I think we uh, we study the races pretty closely, and uh, and I, I think we can. Uh, throw ideas back and forth and how the race should shape up and stuff like that. So that's another thing that's a big plus for us that we can read the races and uh, and see how we, we plan to whether the weather race uh, it should be in fall. So it helps a lot. It makes my job a lot easier. And, and then when I had to put it in, put it on it, and he, he can agree with me. And if he doesn't disagree, we, we can put it together and then uh, try to do what's best for the horse. That's the most important thing. And for that particular race, that particular horse, and um, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't work. So when it doesn't work, we just move on and try to do better the next time. Like I said before, you know, it's, it's about having the communication and and hopefully it's making the less mistakes possible. And that's how 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 it, it has worked for this long. Hall of Fame jockey John Velasquez, over 6,000 wins, a pair of Kentucky Derbies, uh, four Triple Crown races overall, 15 Breeders' Cup races. Not all of those with Todd Pletcher. We saw this this year on the Derby where a great team of Bob Maffert and Mike Smith. Smith opted off for the Derby, came back in the Baffert uh, connection for the Preakness. Is it tough sometimes when you have to tell Todd, uh, look, I I'm going this way, I'm not going to be riding your horse this time around? Absolutely, you know, and especially when we have, we're together for so many years. So, but that's part of the business, you know. When uh, you, you commit to somewhere else, and uh, you know you have a, a, another good horse outside a South Barn, um, sometimes you have to do those decisions as well. Um, for the most part, uh, we stick around with him no matter what. Though, you know, obviously we, that's why we're still, uh, you know, doing business with him. Uh, but when uh, you committed to a horse that uh, is showing uh, so much talent and is running really well. So sometimes you got to do the, the, that part of the business. The great jockeys, they talk about the clock in their head. They they can figure out about how the pace is going, about where they are in the race. Uh, John's one of the best at that. But I want to ask you, I don't know how many mile and a half dirt races you're going to ride before Saturday in the Belmont this year. Uh, so, I mean, it just kind of pops up on you, it seems like, with all the jockeys, what, he may have one race uh, at a mile and a half on the dirt prior to the on Belmont? The dirt, that's, about, that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. So we'll probably have one one race a mile and a half in the dirt uh, before the Belmont stakes. So, um, you know, it's like everything. you got to get adjusted to it, um, really. And uh, for for us, for the jockeys, I mean, you got to do the homework and, and everything now is that, that, that is – Goes in enhanced to ride the race and to read the race. So, um, really, you got to get a custom right away. And and whether you ride the race one time or not, um, you know, you're going around the house. So, it's a completely different race and it's more patience. And, and hopefully, the horse can handle the distance, really. It is the toughest thing you mentioned patience. And, and I guess, especially with jockeys that haven't ridden that much and don't have your experience, uh, a few of them had told me in the past that. You know, after they go like about a mile and an eighth, they're thinking, that's a mile and an eighth. How much, how much longer is this? Yeah, it gets very long, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, especially here in Belmont, because here's what happened. Belmont is so big, and, and uh, by the time you get to the back stretch, you, you really are just getting to the mile pole, you know, and, and every racetrack in America is still, when you get to the back stretch, it's a three quarter pole, you know. Right. So it's totally different, you know. So you, you get to the back stretch, you think, you're in the three quarter pole, and then obviously you're not. You're still in the mile pole, just just about you know the mile pole, passing the mile pole when you get to the back stretch. So you know you got a long way to go. You know it's, when you get used to that and, and ride in another racetrack, then you get to the back stretch. It's only three quarter of a mile left, you know, to go. So you you got you you kind of get in a uh, in a mindset that you you have to start moving. And here at Belmont, you, you can't. You know. You, really have to be patient then you know you got to you got to the back stretch and you know you have a long a long way to go and you really have to save your horse john as far as the big sandy which earns its name uh, uh, there's primarily there's a lot of sand in that track as compared to any other track you're going to ride in uh does that kind of take a toll on a horse over the course of a mile and a half i mean is it is it just like another track as far as they're concerned or have you noticed no, I, I won't say. I mean, I, th I, I don't think the track is so much. It's just the distance, really. You know, it's what really 
uh, gets to anybody, you know, any horse. I mean, you go on a mile and a half, and like I said, we'll, they're, they're not used to it anyway. Now, none of those horses have run a mile and a half. For, first of all, the three-year-olds, and none of them has run it a mile and a half before until they go to the Belmont. So it's about having the patient and see if, we can, uh, if they can handle this, the distance. And you got to save the best you can for the end. Or, you know, this is very simple. I mean, the track is normally, uh, they, they keep a good, a good hole of it, and the track is pretty uh, safe and uh and very good. So it's about, you know, really the horse has to handle the distance. In, intrepid heart. If this works out perfectly for you, where will he be on that back stretch? It's still a mile to go and uh, getting ready to come yeah, around that I big turn. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be too far back. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a whole lot of speed in the race uh, yet. You know, it's like, um, I, unless somebody puts in there a horse that, that, uh, that I don't know. Uh, but right now, not a whole lot of speed. I think he's going to be close to the, to the pace. Um, I I think uh, the other top pressure horse might might be end up on the lead. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so he's going to be close to the lead. I I, I, don't, I don't see too far back. So, but like I said, you know, whether it's close or a little farther back, you got to be patient no matter what where where going to be. And uh, and I think uh, if he hands loaded the, the distance, I think we're we're going to be in good shape. You won over six thousand races. I think it'd be impossible to say, "Hey, what's your favorite race?" I don't know if you have a favorite oh, race no, or two. Absolutely no. no, no favorite races. I mean, they don't count. Uh, they're definitely uh, the, those important races that everybody knows. I believe that the two Durban, the two Belmont, uh, I, they really stick out no matter where you go uh, in the world. You know, they ask you right away. So you know, and people who knows about racing and and. Uh, always ask you, have you been in the derby? Have you won it? But you know, those the things that everybody asks you, no matter what you, where you go in the world. So, uh, unless they know who you are and they know that you won the derby, but for most fans, that you know, uh, the casual fan, they don't, they like racing, but they don't really follow this. First questions they ask, wait, are you been in the derby? How you won it? So, those are very, very memorable races, though. So, yeah, you are cool. Yeah, Animal Kingdom in '11, I remember that one very well, and then always dreaming. Uh, just a couple of years ago, I figured that was also special because it's your second one, but this is the one that you and Pletcher teamed up together to win. No, absolutely. You know, and obviously the first time you win the Derby, it's, it's, it's special. Um, and uh, it was a horse that I picked up the day of the, uh, the day before the race. Right. Um, but for great people, I mean, a great connection, Graham, Graham Anita, uh, motions, you know, a good friend for, uh, for a long time. So it was great to had the opportunity uh, and win it for them uh with them i just said yeah. <laughs> and then obviously getting together with todd it was so much success for throughout the years and not winning derby with him it was definitely one of those things that, that I, it was missing um and then thankfully we we got one uh one and out of the way together so he had one in before without me so that this time it would, we did it together so <laughs> definitely very very pleased and very blessed and, and I don't know from a jockey standpoint, I've covered many of these derbies and uh, been fortunate to cover the Triple Crown for several years and interview you, and you're always very gracious as you are now. But uh, that derby scene, I still don't think there's anything like it. I mean, the, just the paddock scene alone, it, it looks like there's thousands of people. I know there's not, but you don't yeah. have any breathing room down there in the paddock, John, much less when you come out before 160,000 fans. It is. It is a hectic day. It's a day, you know, and, and for everybody, but it's exciting, though. You know, this is what makes uh, racing exciting, though. having so many people around and, and so many fans and celebrities and all the owners and, and the families have the trainers and, and the families. So, so it's just what makes racing exciting, though. So nice to see that and, uh, and, and people continue supporting racing. So I'm glad to be part of it, definitely. If people can't make it out to the Cherry Valley Country Club in Garden City on Wednesday, June the 5th, uh, they can always get in touch with the Jockey Guild to help out the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund? Absolutely. You can always uh, get together or go to the, uh, the website of the Jockeys Guild or the, uh, the uh, Permanently, Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund, which is, uh, I think it's uh, pdjf.org. Uh, you can always go into the into the website and, and donate really you know it'd be very very nice and every little bit will help uh, to go to for the for the cause the right cause by the way you know i think uh, these guys and girls who really give it all in the racetrack and and then when they're done they, they can really uh have you know support the families or themselves so this is this is definitely very important and 
and very close to our heart. I know it is to yours, and you got so involved with it early, and you're one, there's other big names, but you're one of the big names out there uh, of the sport that got involved in this and got other people interested in this. Uh, was there anything particular that, that motivated you to, to be so uh, benevolent as you are with this? Well, I'll tell you the truth, I mean, um, it, it's for me to give back, obviously, I've been very blessed uh, with my career, and I have my really bad accidents as well, but right. I mean, I've been able to come back and do the job that I love, and even though it's dangerous and everything, but it's been really good for my family, uh, to me, and my, myself, and my family, uh, uh, the job that I do. But I've been very blessed that I can come back and do it. So, yes, yeah, definitely, that's one of, it's always near my heart, and then, uh, Gary Barso was really, uh, that's what got me really into it when he had his accident, mm -hmm. uh, very young when he got his accident back in, I don't remember, it was 2000 and something. Yeah. Um, and I went to see him in the hospital and, and that really got me into it. Uh, you know, like, listen, I got to do my best to to give back whatever I can get and, and and hopefully one day we can have guaranteed funding for for these guys and girls who get hurt on the racetrack. So that's what really got me into it. I mean, I got my accidents and I always been able to come back. Uh, so it's hard to see when you're very young, or even if you have a long career, it doesn't matter how long you've been working, but you know, uh, to see somebody that really trying to support the families, uh, then say even starting out, you know, they, I, I know not all the people started out mm -hmm. and just rode for, I think, a year and a half. And I saw, I saw this kid growing up in Saratoga. And uh, I'm talking about Michael Strait. And right. all of a sudden, a year after he started riding, he's, he's paralyzed. So it's hard to see that, though, you know. And you, you love to, you know, to help the best you can. And, uh, really, uh, whatever help we can get. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, I, I know they're grateful and they, they're very thankful. Well, John, you're one of the great guys in the sport. And uh, I always appreciate your time and uh, for those listening, if you cannot be at the Cherry Valley Country Club in Garden City for the fundraiser, like John said, you can go to the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund and check out their website, check out the Jockeys Guild, Guild website. Uh, there's many opportunities and ways for you to donate, even if it's just a few bucks. Uh, because like you say, these guys don't have a, they've got the Jockeys Guild, but it's not the union that you would think of like with other professional sports, as John said, where there's guarantees down the road for people that are injured or, or they're going to be getting a guaranteed pension money down the road. That is not all that. No, that is not. <laughs> we don't have that. And like I said, like I say, there's no guarantee funding from anybody. Though. You know, we, we treat it like a independent contractor, so there is no money going for any pensions or money for any uh payment to say what riders so that's not none of that is is set up for us well john listen i really appreciate your time best wishes with intrepid heart this weekend in the belmont stakes i know that'll be a busy day with you uh belmont's such a big deal always uh, that day and uh then best wishes with this uh, fundraiser coming up on uh, june the 5th i will see you there Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll talk again soon. John Velasquez, the Hall of Famer, joining us here. Stay with us.